the first thing is to build our sprite that we want to animate. It really doesn't matter too much what flash format you choose, whether you choose the HTML5 canvas or the ActionScript 3 one. Uh, since we did have so many issues with the HTML5 canvas format, I'm just going to go back to my old standard of the ActionScript 3 for building my animation. The number one problem people have run into is they build their sprite on the main timeline, they convert it to a movie clip, but then they start animating on the main timeline. So we're in scene one on the main timeline. So if I do that and then add in another frame, turn on some onion skinning so I can see what's going on. So if I have, so right now we can see it's a two frame animation. If I take this frame, convert it to a movie clip, and we look at it. Now if I go into my library, I can go, look, it's two frames. I have two frames, but my movie clip is only one frame long. So if I take this and create a sprite sheet, we'll see the sprite sheet is only one frame long. So that's not going to work. The important thing that we have to do is we have to build our animation inside the movie clip itself. So what I would recommend as part of that is that we don't do it there. The first thing you do is you just say insert new symbol, which is movie clip. Again, movie clip we can choose. And now we'll see that I'm inside the timeline, not on scene one on my main stage, but I'm inside the movie clip with its own content. So this is where I now want to work with and build my artwork. So I can have as many layers as I want. Now if this continues out, I'll turn on onion skinning just to make it easier to see for animating. So I'm going to make this face so that the eye is turning. And now I create the illusion that the eye is kind of around the head. Now with this animation, it is 18 frames long, it is three layers deep, but it's all occurring inside this symbol. So if I go back to scene one, and look, we'll see that it's inside that symbol. We have my bad face and my good face. And if I look in the library, we'll see the bad one doesn't give me a play option because it is one frame long. But the good one is 18 frames long. So the first step is to make sure you build your content inside the movie clip, not on the main stage. Because there's been multiple instances where teams have built their content on the main timeline. They export their sprite sheet and they get a one frame sprite sheet. Not really useful. They're like, but all my frames are there. It's like, yes, they're there, but they're on the main timeline, not inside the movie clip that you tried to export. Again, right click, generate sprite sheet. We can see, okay, here's my sprite sheet that it's going to make. And now with that, we have to make sure to choose our data format and we choose edge animate. That creates a .eas file. We need that .eas file and we need the sprite sheet PNG that Flash is going to generate for us to be able to bring this into edge animate. So I need to pay attention to where I'm going to save it. So I'll click on Browse, go find somewhere. I'll throw it on the desktop for now. If you don't make a folder um, or put it into a project folder, it can get hard to find sometimes. <coughs> so now I made a folder. Give it a name, hit Save. 
and with that I can choose export and now if I go to the desktop on the desktop I'll see there's the folder there's the .eas file and here is the PNG file the .eas file looks like this so here we can see the code in it and what the file is is it's in essence it's an XML file where it stores the information for each frame of the animation it stores the X Y width and height for that frame and it stores where is that on the given sprite sheet recognizing that the sprite sheet is one image so it says the first one is at these coordinates the next frame will be at these coordinates the next frame is at these coordinates so that's what this file is keeping track of if you did not heed my warning and you built your animation on the main timeline so you put something on the main timeline and you may have even converted it into a movie clip itself so then this would be my that thing and you tweened it oh, missed. so it tweens across and it moves and does weird stuff so even if you build your little animation and that's what you wanted and maybe even there's multiple layers going on So we have all kinds of just garbage animation. So you have a couple layers, you have your stuff, you're like, I don't want to redo it, how do I? The way to get around it is we need to copy the frames. Now one thing about copying frames, if I click on a frame and then click and drag, it moves that frame, not what we want. But if I click and drag, I can select frames. So where you click matters and it takes a little bit of finessing to figure it out. So if I put my cursor on a frame and click and drag, I can select frames. Once you do that, you are then able to right click in the timeline on those frames and choose copy frames. Once you do that, then you can go to the correct first step which is insert pull down menu new symbol make your movie clip and then right click in the timeline and choose paste frames and that now put a copy of that animation you just built at the main timeline even though you were explicitly told not to and you chose to blatantly disregard my instructions that's all right everybody does there is a workaround so then we can get the content into it. I can right click on red animation, generate sprite sheet. We can see there are the frames. I want the edge animate data format. It should be going into the same folder as the previous one. So I can hit browse and look, but it apparently isn't. Class demo. Okay, hit export. There it is, I should now have a new PNG, I have a new ease file, another PNG, another ease file. So now I'm good, I can bring these animations into Photoshop. Again, we animate inside a movie clip, right click on the movie clip in the library, generate sprite sheet, add the data format of edge animate, and you're good to go. Now we're ready to start working in edge so I have a brand new file it's begging me to do something first thing I should always do is I should save so I'm going to save it into the same folder as the other ones that I've been working on for my class demo now it's saved into that folder to bring my sprites into edge I need to go and choose file import sprite sheet 
go find my sprite sheet and I am going to bring in the blue face first and I'll say open and it will show me it's like hey look there's an image you're bringing it in and I will also need to select load an EAS file I click on that it's, it says good to go import is now available I can click on import and it will bring it into my project as long as I'm importing things I'm going to also import the other one so I have more than one to play with as this demo continues so I'll bring in my red animation hit OK say load the EAS file hit import and what I will see is inside the library in animate we can see now those images are there those sprite sheet images which if I were to drag the image out we can see it's the sprite sheet but we don't want to do that I want to drag out the symbol now the symbol is the animation it if you look close you will notice that the symbol also has the same icon on it as a movie clip in flash does it pays to be aware of your surroundings look at your surroundings study those nuances because that helps you navigate the tool so I can now drag that symbol out and we'll see there it is and now it exists on the timeline now if I want to animate this I can now move it to move my timeline to a new spot in time and I can now move this over and we can now see it moves over la -dee da now we'll notice when the animation moves over the eye plays once and now it stops if I test my movie we will see that that's what it does and now it stopped if we want the animation to continue then what we need to do is we need to put a trigger inside the animation that tells the animation to go back and play from its beginning frame and it's pretty straightforward to do that but we have to go into that element because when I look at the timeline here we can see that its playback is plain and it's scrubbable playback actions here and we can choose play but it doesn't do much the easy way to get it to permanently loop is to double click on it so now if we notice just like flash we went from the stage to inside the symbol we're in the symbols timeline here and I'm going to insert a trigger at this point inserting the trigger is command T on the keyboard you put the playback head where we want it to be command T or I click on this little icon in my actions and we see it also tells us insert trigger is command T so it's helping us out there so I can click on that it inserts the trigger and now it's waiting for me to put in some code if I were super awesome I could just start typing code here and I could impress all of my friends and acquaintances and relatives and they would be so wowed by your coding prowess that they would bow down before you and say you are a rock star or they would say you're a geek whatever but you don't have to type anything except the number of where we want it to go and the way that we can do that is I click on playback then I will click on play then I will double click on what I want to play and I want my face good symbol to, oh sorry not play I want play from let me try again playback play from face good symbol and now right now it says hey tell the symbol to play at 1000 which is 1000 milliseconds or one second in my timeline but I want to go back to zero so I'll change 1000 to zero once I change that to a zero I can close out of here and what will happen is this will play it will get to the end and it will play again and it will play again and it will play again so it will play and then it goes back to the beginning and it will create a permanent loop so if I test my movie now we'll see it plays it plays it plays and now it keeps playing 
It's a little disturbing that is, you know, my Cyclops' eye spins, but his mouth isn't moving with it. But that's all right. It's all part of his eclectic charm. So once again, if I want to get rid of that, I'll repeat that process. I go to the end of the symbol, insert a trigger, Command T, or click on the trigger button, playback, play from, double click on the symbol's name, and then change the 1000 to zero. If I want to go somewhere else in my timeline, which is what we will look at shortly, we insert the number of where we want it to go. If I want to go to five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds into my project, I insert the appropriate number, remembering one second is 1,000, 10 seconds would be 10,000, etc. Continuing now that I have some artwork created, I'll bring some extra assets into Animate. Now for these, they're not sprite sheets, they're just going to be static assets, so I can bring those in using the import command. Again, choose import, go find my demo. I want to bring in my blue. I want to bring in my orange, my green button and my orange button. Probably should have been a blue button, but I changed my mind. So I can bring those assets in. We can see those assets now show up in my library. They exist in my library over here, and they're sitting on my stage, waiting for me to do something. I haven't saved in a little while, so I'll save. And now I'm going to move things around. One of the things that I want to do is, initially I want these to not always be on. When we want something to show up later in our timeline, we need to control its visibility. And by default, everything we bring in is always on. And I'm going to choose off for all of these elements that just showed up. A couple of things now just happened. We'll see that here, they're now their display property has been set to off. Now, once this eyeball moves across the screen to right here, then what I am going to do is I am going to now turn on my green button. So I will now change its display from off, and I will change it to on. So we can see that it was off, now it's on. Now put the green button right there because I like that position better. Now it pops on. I also want my orange button to show up, so I will change that now from off to on. Oop, wrong entity. Orange button. Change that to on. And I will position it over here. So now I have my project, the buttons show up at the end. If we test it again, face goes across, so it's there, and now the buttons are there waiting for me to do something to them. Key thing is once I brought my assets in, I set their display property to none, or I turn them off. Then I can turn them back on at the point I want to see them on screen. Now, at a later point on screen, I don't want them to be on because I'm going to now choose a different place in time. In this case, it works out to be, heck, I'll even scrub out so it's way out there just for fun. I'm at six seconds. The question came up, can you navigate without having to scrub the timeline? If your project has started to get long, 15, 20, 30, 50 seconds, or two minutes, three minutes, it takes a while to scrub the timeline. But you can enter a number in right here inside this window, and it will now navigate you to that point. So if I enter in a zero, it brings me back to the beginning. If I enter in six, brings me out to six seconds. So I can enter in the value that I want. So at six seconds, I want the orange button to turn off. I want the green button, not to shift, but to turn off. And I want 
orange to come back on. And I think I want the face to not be there anymore. So I'll click on the face layer and I will turn that one to off at that point. So we have the intro animation, the two buttons come up and when I click on this orange button I will want my project to go to six seconds. And we're able to do this by selecting the object. And with the object selected, we can add the actions to it in a couple of different places. We can do it up in the elements where we see the object that is selected is highlighted, so we can see the highlight. And I can click on open actions for that object. If I click open actions, it's prompting me. It's asking, do I want this to be a swipe left, swipe right, mouse enter, mouse leave, or a click, a double click, a mouse over, a mouse down? I can choose whatever event I want to have happen. This is one of the cool parts about this is Edge Animate isn't designed just for mouse and desktop browser interactions, but it recognizes that we now have touch devices. So we can include that. I'm going to, though, just go with the easy, and I'll just choose click. And then once I chose click, now what I'm going to do is say, okay, if I click on this button, I want under playback, I want to choose play from, and I'll tell the main timeline, the stage, double click on it, and now enter. Right here we see the number. So we can see the number here. Currently it says 1,000, which is one second. But we don't want to go to one second. We want to go to six seconds. So to, to go to six seconds, I would enter in 6,000. And then I can close out of there. Now, if I test my project, there comes the face, there's my buttons, and I'm waiting. Oh, it didn't stop on my buttons. It kept going. And that's because I never told it to stop once the button showed up on screen. So we need to put a trigger in at the point that the buttons come up and say, hey, don't do anything. Don't keep playing because we want to have the clicking of the button send us to the correct frame. So currently, the animation comes in. In my main timeline, I can insert a trigger the same way I inserted a trigger inside the movie clip. I can hit Command T at this point, or I can click under Insert Trigger, the little icon right here, whichever makes you happy. And I will choose Playback, Stop, double click on Stage to insert that. It's important that if you single click, nothing happens. You have to double click when you're in this Actions window. So to undo that, Playback, Stop. Now it's giving me an option of what I want to have stop, and I will double click on it. If I single click, it shows in gray what it's thinking about putting in, but nothing has happened yet. It's not actually putting the code in. That's a really common thing that you go, oh yeah, okay, playback, stop, you click, and then you close out, and then you test your movie, and it doesn't work, and you start using all kinds of pirate-based language. And that's just you know not good if small children are around. So instead, we just remember to double click, puts it in, good to go. Test my movie, face comes in, and now it waits, and nothing will happen until I click on the orange entity. I can click here, there, nothing, click here, it jumped to that frame. To repeat the process for the other button, I will go find a point in time. Let's say I will choose. And your numbers don't have to be even. If your numbers get really wonky, it's even possible we can insert labels into our timeline to make it a little bit easier. So if I'm at some weird spot, it's not an easy to remember a whole second kind of number like this. What I can do is I can Command L allows me to put a label in my timeline. We can see now it says label one. 
And for this, this will be blue seam. Now when you're putting your labels in, I don't know if it prohibits spaces, but it's a bad practice to put in spaces. So try to avoid spaces on your label name and keep your label short and sweet and to the point. Now at this blue scene, I will want orange to be turned off. So click on orange and say off. And I will now go find blue and tell blue to be on. So now blue is on, orange is off. Now, now that I have done this, it's called blue scene. That's the label I gave it. Now if I go back to my buttons, can go to my second button, and I can insert its actions by choosing right click. I thought I could right click to my actions. Guess not. With my object up here, I can click on actions. I can also get actions for the object by clicking to the left of it down here. And we'll choose for this one. Ah, we'll leave it as a click still. Why not? Playback. Play from. Stage. And inside quotation marks, I will say blue scene, close quotation marks. So I'm specifying where I want it to go. And I can close out of here. Face comes in. It's waiting for me to click. I click on my button. It goes to my blue scene. If I even go back to that page, reload the page, face comes in, button show up. If I click on the orange button, goes to the orange. Oh, orange rolled into blue. Orange rolled into blue because at the end of orange, I never put a stop. So once I went to orange, it kept playing until it got to blue. So because there's nothing after blue, when we get to blue, we're like, oh yeah, we're good. But when I get to orange, it kept playing for another uh, generous second and then went to blue. So once again, I can add a trigger, playback, stop, double click stage, close out of here, now we're good. Now if I wanted to put a button at this point, an additional button on screen that I could use to bring me back, I could even just grab out one of the other buttons. Let's see. Drag out. Put a copy of the green one on top. I can now take that green one. Currently it's set to always on. Well, I want it on at that frame, but at the beginning I want it off because we don't want to see it. So it'll be off. Go through there's a, where? Oh, and I have to now turn it back on as well. Just wondering where it went to. Okay, so it's off. Turn it on. So it will now show up. So this button, I can click on the button. I can click on its actions down here. Choose click, playback, and I can choose play from, stage, and now if I can remember the stage was at, that's not quite two seconds, it's a little bit, or no, it, it is two seconds, I think. Oh, 2.045. This is where labels would be really nice. So I am going to add a label at this point and call this first choice. So now I can choose, tell it to go to quotes first choice. 
So now that button will bring me back. So I have a return button. So if I click on this one, oh, not that one, click on the other one. And click here and that brings me back to that point. So now I can loop through my timeline. So now, let's see, let's go find, this one has a button, this one does not have a return button, but if I were to have an element, that's what I have to move it up here. Oh. If I have this element, which that's a horrible color, we'll choose something at least a little bit. I will go with the whole blue theme. So if I have an element that I have up made in animate, this element can take actions the same as any other element that I work with. First I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it on here. So it's gone. Okay, so now this element if I want this to be active, I can click actions here or actions over here. I'll say click, playback, play from, stage, and first choice. Again, when you're referring to a label, make sure you do labels inside quotation marks. If you just put the words in there, your code will freak out. And we don't want any freak outs. Okay, so if I click here, click here, brings me back, click here, brings me back. So now we're jumping around the timeline. Now, it's also possible to do a, two more effects on your buttons. One is to make it so the button looks like a button because the cursor changes when you're over it. That only works, of course, if you have a pointing device like a mouse or if you have a, a Galaxy uh, S with a stylus, that gives you a pointer option. But if it's a mobile device with a finger, no such luck. So you need to make buttons look like buttons if you're designing for a mobile experience. But this blue button I have here, I can go under my property panel, click under auto on the cursor and change it so its cursor becomes a hand. So it looks like the traditional kind of finger, so it gives me the finger, so to speak. And if I do that, when it gives me the finger, click here, we can see how now it looks more like a button, where these don't behave like a button. I think they might be a button because they have kind of a button-esque shape to them. And it would make sense to probably do that to all of my buttons, is to set their cursor so that they become a hand. So that one's set to a hand. And that one is set to a hand. Uh, now you can choose other cursors. Don't choose the waiting cursor or question mark or make people think their computers have crashed because that's just not nice. So you can, but it's a bad, you know, I can go choose wait on it, but it's just bad form, so please don't. Uh, that violates UI kinds of things. Now, all the cursors have been changed, but the other thing that you can do is you also have an option for constructing what would be an invisible button. So I could make this area here where this blue shape is that I'm using as a home button. If I didn't want to see it, I just wanted people to be able to click there, I can now set the alpha of that element to zero. So its alpha is gone. And then if I test my movie, we get the cool hand cursors now. That's better, so I know they're clickable. I click, and oh look, I get it, the hand showing up at that point indicating that's clickable. I click, and now it brings me back.